how would you assess last uh, weekend? I mean, to come back against St. Lawrence and then, you know, a tough loss against Clarkson. Well, anytime you go on that North Country trip and you come back with uh, one, it's a good trip. It's just not a great trip. Um, I didn't think we had our best against St. Lawrence until until the third. And really, the guys really kind of, you know, turned it up a notch, which was nice to see. Uh, I think they were rewarded, finally just kind of stuck with it with the power play that night. And, you know, it was a nice, uh, just, just a nice goal by Chaz Smezrud. So, um, and then the next night, Ted, uh, it, <laughs> it was a kind of a, a tale of, if you don't sc if you don't score on the power play, you go for six. We were in and out quickly in our ozone play, so it kind of taxed our legs, and just didn't think we had enough energy to really kind of with withstand the sixty minutes. Although we although we did outchance them, um, we just we just didn't find the back of the net. With less than with less than two months left in the regular season, is it crunch time now? Or is it too early for crunch time? Nah. We only got six home games left. Yeah. Well, we haven't done a lap around our league yet. Right. Well, that so, so I can't. Oh, we still haven't played uh, Harvard or Dartmouth. Yeah, that's right. You're right. So, no, I'm not going to say it's crunch time. That's. Uh, we, we don't need to put any more added pressure on these guys, and they already probably feel at times. Um, so, no, we're just, honestly, there's, Good signs, but again, this is just going to be a <laughs> a work in progress, and you never know when it clicks. You guys have used Voss on the forward line recently. How long has that plan been kind of formulated? When, and why did you pull the trigger lately to, to use him in that way? Because uh, we had one of our forward go down. Um, so when we were playing 7D that night, so Voss was the guy that uh, went, went up front. So we give it a shot, and <laughs> so stay tuned whether or not he's he's back on D or back on forward. He's just gonna have to be a, a hybrid guy the rest of the way. Who got hurt that he was in for? Ah, uh, Ferris. Okay. Ferris was out the second night. Any assessment on how Voss did there, and what can you say about the adjustment of player like him? He's played D line for his whole career here, and all of a sudden he's sure. in that position. Yeah, the assessment was uh, he scored. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> so, kudos to to him and his line, you know, for that because that gave us the tie versus you know at, at you know versus Providence. Uh, Cl um, uh, Clarkson, it was you know, it wasn't like you know, it was just kind of blah. Like it wasn't, I mean, blah is the right word. Just didn't, just didn't have enough, and it wasn't it wasn't Voss. It was it was all of us <laughs> up front. When you're getting to the point where you're considering pulling a D guy up, does he kind of have the skill set where he's the no-brainer guy to, to pull the trigger on that move? Yeah, he's he's one of them. We've done it with Fletcher Feynman. Right. Yeah, remember that. Maybe we should just uh, pluck a, a D uh, up there every game, rotate one, because every time they do, they seem to score their first their first times <laughs> going the forward. So maybe we're on to something here. Find a, find a Red Kelly Jones, a defensive forward. Yeah, you know, it's it's ironic. We used to uh, I talk about that with our staff. It'd, it'd be nice to have like a, a hybrid type of player. Um, our former volunteer Aaron, Aaron Bogosian was one of the best I've seen at St. Uh, Lawrence when 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 he played. He was very good. So it's a lost art because a lot of forwards just can't skate backwards. So um, or you know, so it's a little it's a little different. When you talk about the work in progress. And you've talked about that a lot this year. It would be in January 8th or whatever it is. How much of a pro has it progressed like in the last month till now? I'd like to, we'd like to feel that we, we have made a stride. Uh, some to the visible eye people can't see because, uh, you know, they just judge it by your record, which is fair enough. That's that's the racket we're in. Um, but, yeah. Talking to other coaches, you know, the last time I checked, we didn't get pumped by Clarkson. We were much better, but not to our standards. We didn't win, but I do think we're making we're making strides. We're we're in these games.
We are in these games where earlier, as you guys saw, we weren't. What has to happen to get, I mean, what, what do you guys have to do on the ice? We have to we, we have to be consistent. We as we talked about earlier, that has which hasn't changed. The margin of error this year is 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 really slim. So we have to be consistent in all areas of our game, and that to me is as I said before, that is that's tough. I, I read box scores and, and and listen to coaches and players from the NHL. They have a tough time doing it. What 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 makes you think that we're not? So, and the best teams are consistent. And until we figure that out, it's going to be up and down. You know, look, you know, Cornell, obviously one of the top teams in this league, number two in the country. Colgate, overall record, two games below 500, but, you know, surprisingly, 5 2 and 1 in conference play. I mean, yeah. Is this a team you really can't sleep on? I mean, oh, not sort of, at all. They're, they're sort of an under radar, under the radar team this year in the league. Yeah. <laughs> We've, like I said, we haven't seen everybody, but. I've watched everyone on film and just got done watching these guys a few games and they beat Harvard, uh, which, which was an excellent team um, at that time with their record. Um, and I was really impressed with, with Colgate. Um, I'll watch Cornell a little bit later in this week, but I just focus on Colgate at this point and I was really impressed. Always have been. They always compete hard. A Donnie Vaughn team is always going to compete. Always. And that's what makes for a fun game. Um, you know, some of these time, these games are hard hitting, uh, borderline chippy, which is fine. Um, and you just have to be prepared for that. You have to be ready to battle. And that's hopefully that prepares us for the next night. You didn't happen to watch their Dartmouth game, right? Did you? I did not. Just curious because they had a weird weekend against Dartmouth. Cornell got beat two one, but they outshot them like forty. Yeah. Like I said, we're, I'm just we're just so focused on Colgate. You know, the staff is focusing on uh, Cornell, but I'll watch it later within the week. You have so many guys that weren't here last year, but there are still some hold, 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 holdovers, obviously, from the end of last season. You have to worry about them having a little bit of grudge about Cornell being the team that ended their season the way it went down and all that stuff at all. No, I really don't. No, <laughs> there's there's just so much new that <laughs> these guys can't remember what they did yesterday. Never mind worrying about what 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 happened last year. So we're just like I said, focused solely on Colgate. Morgan Barron, you saw got an eye full of him last year. Is there any indication that he's gotten better? Or, I know you haven't seen him yet this year, but uh... I will say this: I have seen him on on, on tape early, and I've always been a big fan. Of him, uh, I, I thought the Jack Dugan kid from Providence was the best kid I've seen so far, and I got to tell you, watching Morgan Barron live last year, it's uh, I didn't think that was possible to find a guy better than him, um, and but so I'm really curious to see him up up live and in personal here again because he is a fun player to watch, you know he's he's a pro. He's an absolute pro hockey player right right now, and we don't. To be honest with you, I've only seen a few of those this this year. He is definitely to me one and two at this at this time, at this time. Does his game remind you of anybody in the NHL? It reminds me of uh, the old days of, of Jeremy Welsh. Okay. That's who it reminds me of. When Jeremy, I'll speak more in Jeremy's junior year. I just thought he was a man. At times, playing playing with boys, he really was. I, it was it was fun to watch, and you guys all watched him. Uh, that's probably the closest comparison that I can give. You know, to Baron. 